Um, how can I help today? Some patients like the convenience of a phone call. Does that sound all right? Some prefer to avoid the risk of catching an infection in the waiting room. But other people really value seeing their doctor face to face. Franco is in remission after treatment for the blood cancer myeloma. His specialist calls him and he finds it hard that contact with his GP is also only by phone. Any consultation over the telephone tends to be much quicker than if I was seeing somebody in person and actually having the chance to sort of get my head together and ask proper questions. It makes me sort of doubt that when the, when the disease does flare up again that they're actually going to spot it because it feels like they're not really taking it terribly seriously. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Too. Today, the Health Secretary announced £250 million of support so surgeries can employ more locum doctors and update their telephone queuing systems. But the government says patients must be able to demand a face-to-face -face consultation and GPs judged too hard to access will be publicly named. It's important that the patients that feel that they should be with their GP face to face, that there is enough capacity to do that. And when GPs came to us and said, look, we'd love to do a lot more face to face, but can we please get some more funding for it? Can you please get rid of some of this red tape? Can you get the pharmacist to help us out a bit more? That's exactly what we've done. But England is almost 8,000 GPs short of what it needs. At Simon Iqbal's practice in Manchester, two doctors are covering the work of five. I would love to go back to seeing every single patient face to face, but the reality of it is I don't have the capacity or the workforce to be able to do that. There is no magic tree out there with GPs on it. The issue from the perspective of the profession is not the money. The doctors' union warns morale has hit rock bottom. For some years now, senior and experienced clinicians have been leaving the profession through burnout and intolerable workloads. Uh, and uh, this set of punitive measures is really simply going to exacerbate that problem uh, and make things a lot worse. And no one, not the government, nor the GP profession or their patients, want to see that happen as winter approaches. And Catherine's here. That's GPs, Catherine. We also learnt today about waiting times for hospital appointments. What can you tell us about that? I'm afraid a, a worsening picture, as you might expect. The figures, though, showing a heroic effort by hospitals over the summer to try to catch up with that backlog. So in August, the number of operations was a third higher than August last year, even though they were seeing 14 times as many COVID patients. And in September, major A&E units seeing their highest ever numbers, a quarter of them under understandably, then waiting more than four hours to be seen. That's the worst performance on that metric since that uh, began in 2004. More than a quarter of those who then needed to be admitted from A&E waiting over four hours for a bed, um, and more than 5,000 waiting on a trolley for over 12 hours. I think, as one expert put it, um, the NHS is fighting fires on multiple fronts. Mm.